Hey, welcome to another Bible study here at Influence Church. We are about to jump into the book of Exodus. That's right. We've completed the book of Genesis. That's 13 episodes in total. And if you missed any of those previous studies, what you can do is you can go to our YouTube channel. You can click on the videos tab and you can rewatch any of our previous studies. We've completed the book of Genesis. Previous to that, we completed the book of Revelation. We completed the book of Wisdom, which is the book of Proverbs. And we've completed a lot more studies. So if you missed any of it, like I said, YouTube, click the subscribe button, click the share button if you have not done it as yet. So let's jump into the book of Exodus, grab your Bible so you can follow along and I want you to grab a notepad as well so that you can take some notes. So let's switch over to our presentation for today and the title of the study for today is the book of Exodus and today's study is going to be an introduction into the book of Exodus. So it's going to be on um, the background of the book of Exodus, the audience in whom it was written to, an outline of the book of Exodus, and we're also going to jump into the first couple chapters of the book of Exodus. So a lot of important information coming your way. I hope you're ready. Let's jump into it this evening. Background. Who wrote the book of Exodus? If you're saying Moses, you're correct, because Moses, as we know, is the author of the Torah, also known as the Septuagint, which is the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So the author of this book is Moses. The audience to whom he writes is the people of Israel. The approximated date in which the book of Exodus is believed to be written is around 1450 to 1410 B.C. And where it was written, it was written in the wilderness around that space where the children of Israel were um, wandering in the wilderness from Mount Sinai on their way to the land of Canaan. Mega themes. Some of the themes that we'll see throughout the book of Exodus as we study this book. We're going to see this book starts off talking about slavery. This is a theme that we see the nation of Israel. They're enslaved by Egypt. And that um, quickly we move from that theme of slavery over to a theme of rescue slash redemption. God has a redemption plan to save his people to fulfill the promise that he gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, which is also known as the, the artist formerly known as or also known as um Israel Israel. Um, formerly known as Jacob. I don't know what's going on there with my memory, right? So we see these these key characters that God had given a promise to that he would multiply them, that he would make them a great nation. And now this same generation is stuck in Egypt in slavery, but God is going to fulfill his promise to rescue them, redeem them. And he's going to redeem them or rescue them through a man named Moses, right? We see then coming out of Egypt, being rescued out of Egypt. The next theme that we see occurring is guidance, where God actually leads Moses and leads the children of Israel, almost two million in number, that entire nation. He leads them through the wilderness into what is known as the promised land, that place that he had promised to bless the nation of Israel with, that promise he had given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then we see as they move into that theme of guidance, we move over into the theme of the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is given in the book of Exodus. And then moving out of that theme of the Ten Commandments, we see the nation of Israel really becoming a nation. For the very first time, before they were a people group, um, they were a family, a community. And uh, while yet they remained a family, a community, they evolved into something greater, into actual nation um, that could stand on its own, that had its own leadership and that was led by God. Uh, a nation that was mighty, that was powerful, a, a reckoning force in history and even up until today. So these are the mega themes that we will see throughout the book of Exodus. And the first mega theme that we want to focus a little bit on is slavery, right? The book of Exodus starts off in chapter 1 telling us of the story of how the children of Israel become slaves now in Egypt. Now I want you to remember that up until this time in history, the children of Israel had never been enslaved. After this, we'd read oftentimes of them ending up in slavery. And this is the first instance that they have ended up in captivity. But before this, they were never in captivity. They were free people. They were wealthy people. They were prosperous people. Abraham, Isaac, 
and Jacob. Now, Jacob, as we know, he had 12 sons, the, young, the, the second to last son being Joseph, um, who was the firstborn of Rachel, and she, he became the governor of Egypt. There was a great famine in the land, and because of that famine, the children of Israel moved to Egypt to survive the famine. Joseph granted them favor in the eyes of Pharaoh, and they were able to settle right on the outskirts of Egypt and live there. And the Bible tells us that in total, 70 persons, 70 persons from the household of Jacob moved to Egypt, right? Um, this is excluding Joseph because he was already living in Egypt. So 70 persons in total. Now we can see this theme of them becoming a nation because in the, in the beginning of the book of Exodus, they are 70. By the end of the book of Exodus, when they are leaving Egypt, they are actually close to 2 million in number, right? So they settle on the outside of um, Egypt. Joseph dies and that entire generation dies. All his brothers, his father, they all pass away. And there's a new generation coming up. They are being fruitful. They are multiplying. They are growing in number. But the king or the pharaoh of Egypt also dies. And this new king who takes over reign in Egypt, he does not know Joseph nor his family. He doesn't know the history behind why they are there. He does not know the favor that was granted to them. He doesn't know anything about them. And he sees them as a threat because they are growing in number because they are multiplying he sees them as a threat because they are a strong people and they are a people that are numerous right and that's what he sees he sees numbers and he sees okay this is intimidating these people can possibly maybe overthrow the egyptians and take over their land instead the land of egypt so from fear right egypt decides to fight against israel there was a war that happened and during that time of war egypt joins forces with the enemies of Israel and they take Israel captivity under them. And this is where now Israel, the nation of Israel, the children of Israel become enslaved. And when they are enslaved, the Bible tells us that the Egyptians were extremely cruel towards them. Um, they set taskmasters over them to afflict them. They made them build supply cities two of these major cities and if you were to type in the names of these cities and you were to look into the historical background of these cities you would see that these are two major cities that existed in ancient times that were built by Israelite slaves right so the Egyptians made them build these two cities which is known as Fidom and Ramses right these two majestic cities um, slave labors was used to build it and more specifically the slave labors came from Israel. We also see in the first chapter of the book of Exodus that the king of Egypt told the Hebrew midwives, because, that, because the Hebrews kept multiplying in number, he told the midwives, and mainly two midwives are named in chapter 1 as being the head of all the midwives, and they are Sephra Sif and uh, Pua. And he tells them to kill the Hebrew baby boys. He says, as soon as the baby is born, as soon as that baby comes out of its mother's womb, if it's a boy, you kill that boy. If it's a girl, then it's a, the, the child is allowed to live. This was a way of population control because right now he's trying to stifle the amount of um, people uh, that are of Israelite background. He's trying to control the amount of the, pop, the population number. So he's choosing to kill all their male um, their male sons at from birth because he sees them as a threat. They can e eventually fight. Um, they could um, eventually um, cause a revolt against the Egyptians. So he's trying to control the population, right? So Pharaoh commanded the midwives to do this. However, the midwives, they were Hebrew and that was his mistake. And they did not do it. Instead, they allowed the um, Hebrews to have their children and to keep them in hiding. So Pharaoh eventually commanded all of his people to cast their sons into the river. So once you had a boy child, once you, you, um, you gave birth to a male child, you had to throw that child into the river. And the river, well, they would, that, that baby would drown or they would be eaten by some type of um, predator in that river. That was how much Pharaoh was fearful of Israel and wanted to control their population, right? So we see this theme of slavery and then rebirting in this theme of slavery is uh, one that is meant to be a savior and his name is Moses, right? Moses' mother and father were both Levites. His mother's name was Jochebed 
and his father's name was Amram. His sister's name was Miriam, and his brother's name was Aaron. Um, the story of Moses is that Moses' mother hid him in her house for three months, and after a certain period of time, she could no longer hide the baby. So what she did is she took an ark of bush rushes, asphalt, and pitch, and she laid him in the river banks, right? So she laid him inside this, this um, basket that she created with bulrush, asphalt, and pitch, and she laid him in the river, and she hoped that something miraculous would happen. And she sent Miriam, which is Moses' sister, to look and see what would happen to the baby. And the Bible tells us that Moses, um, he, he was found by the Egyptian daughters, the daughters of the Egyptian Pharaoh, and they wanted to take him into their um, home because they felt compassion for him. Miriam, um, the sister of Moses, sees this happening and she tells the Egyptian daughters that she could um, find a maid to take care of the baby. And they say, okay, carry the baby, let him be nursed. And when he's a little bit older, then bring back the baby and they will care for him. So Moses grows up in the palace of Pharaoh, right? So he is Hebrew, but he grows up in the palace of Pharaoh. And, he, and the Bible tells us that he grows in the par palace of Pharaoh. He becomes um, well learned in all their trades and in all that they, their knowledge and in all their gods and all their, their teachings. However, something happened. And this is found in chapter 2, where Moses now sees an Egyptian beating a Hebrew slave. And out of compassion and out of a heart of wanting to protect his Hebrew brother and the, out of that space of seeing his Hebrew brother in suffering and pain, Moses steps in and he kills the Egyptian instead. When he kills this Egyptian, he, he takes his body and he hides the body in the sand. But soon he realizes that the slaves, the Jews, the Jews, the Israelite slaves, start spreading talk about what he had done. And because of this, he quickly understands that Pharaoh is going to find out that he killed an Egyptian. As a matter of fact, Pharaoh, the word does get back to Pharaoh that Moses killed an Egyptian. So Moses fled. He ran, he left Egypt, and the Bible tells us that he fled to the land of Midian. Now, when he arrived at the land of Midian, he met the daughters of the priest of Midian, and the priest of Midian had seven daughters. Now, these seven daughters were at a well at that point in time when Moses meets them. They were gathering water to feed their animals, and some shepherd uh, men came by, and they were taunting the women and running them from the well, trying to take control of the well for their personal use. Moses steps in and defends these daughters, the seven daughters, and actually helps them to feed the animals. And because of that, he gains favor by the, their father, who is the priest of Midian. And their father, the seven daughters, the priest of Midian, that man becomes Moses' father-in-law. So Moses' father-in-law, his name is Jethro, and Moses takes... His wife, um, his, his wife's name is Zipporah, which is one of Jethro's seven daughters, right? And as Moses lives in the land of Midian, he has two sons whose names are Gershom and Eliezer, right? Biblically, there are no other children recorded as children of Moses, nor is there any other wife recorded as a wife of Moses, right? So in Midian, while he's there, that's where he marries and has a wife and he has two children. From here now is where we would move now into where God calls Moses to be the savior and this deliverer of the people of um, Israel. So the first team that we covered today is the team of slavery. And in our next study, we, before we jump into the team of redemption and rescue, we're going to actually study the names of God because in chapter 3, we find God speaking to Moses through a burning bush. And this is where we get this famous, um, this famous line where Moses says, God, who do I say to the people that send me? And God says, tell them, I am has sent you. And this I am has been translated to the name of God and has been a topic of much controversy. So in our next study, we're going to be talking about the names of God, more specifically that name I am. And what is, it, what is the actual meaning of that name? And is that actually the name of God? Do we know the name of God? What is the name of God? So that's going to be an interesting 
topic that we're going to tackle in our next study. So that brings us to the end of this first study, an introduction into the book of Exodus, some mega themes being seen here, some very important background information into the book of Exodus, as well as the author Moses. Moses is not just the author, but he's also one of the central um, figures that we will see throughout the book of Exodus. He's the main character in the book of Exodus. Um, we move from Joseph being the last main character in Genesis now to Moses, who's going to be the main character that we see for the majority of the book of Exodus, right? So this brings us to the end of our study. If you have any questions, any comments, you can leave it in the comment section. You can message me directly. If you have any criticism as well, I would love to hear your feedback and we can have a discussion. I do pray that you enjoyed this study today and I will see you again in our next study as we talk about and we discuss the names of God. So if you're viewing this a day, enjoy the rest of your day. If you're viewing it tonight, enjoy the rest of your night. God bless you.